Scratching pen needed for race number three because Beauty Live has been withdrawn. Race three, number four. There are no standby starters to replace him and we're down to a field of eight. Fantastic treasure. All wins have been 12 or 1400, having his fourth start over the 1600 on Sunday afternoon. Cheerful days, Mr. Ascendancy, both on the class drop. He's a last start winner, Mr. Ascendancy. All for St. Paul's as a five time course and distance winner. California 10 goes back up in trip. We've got The Rock, a three time course and distance winner, and Beauty Eternal making his class two debut. Paul, as we have a look at the speed map. All for St Paul's likes to lead, but uh, right on his heels is a very, very good horse. Yeah, Beauty Eternal, now he led last time. Uh, they took luck out of the equation and went straight to the front. But with all for St Paul's in the race, he is a noted leader. He just likes to lead. So I think Zach would be happy enough to get the trail because what will happen is all for St Paul's can bring him right into the race. So that's why um, he's uh, there and in the, in the trail. Mr Ascendancy, he won't be too far away and he did win last time. Fantastic treasure, Spirit Express, and California 10, The Rock and Cheerful Days generally get back. All right, well, he is a buzz horse when it comes to racing in Hong Kong. Possibly the next best thing. The next big thing even, here's his trainer John Size to tell us more. Beauty Eternal, one of your runners uh, on Sunday afternoon. He's created such a, a big impression on all of us, I imagine you included. That was a very big win last time. Talk, talk me through that one. Yeah, well, yeah, he's been racing very well. He's obviously um, been uh, very impressive with what we've seen uh, on race day. And um, uh, he's certainly... Uh, it doesn't look like he's going to stop there. It seems like he's going to keep going. I've seen on a couple of occasions the, the sort of the typey horse he is. Obviously, perhaps that that mental maturing still still coming. Uh, do you feel now with the experience that he's he's sort of furnishing into the finished product now? I, well, racing's going to help him develop. You know, obviously, um, he's uh, he can't sort of have the experience till he's had the experience. We we'll just have to wait for it. But yeah, he's been a little bit. Uh, too fresh on race day and uh, he feels good about himself so we'll just have to let him work through it and race through it. John he goes to the mile for the first time on on Sunday afternoon obviously this very much a, a stepping stone towards bigger targets um, I, are you confident that this is his trip and beyond? He looks like in, in, in his races he's, um, he's quite uh, uh, you know happy to comply and and, um, and go whatever speed you want him to go so he doesn't look that difficult to uh, govern so obviously that'll help him run a little bit further. I imagine I mean it's probably more of a question for his rider but the fact that he does it so easily is it, is it hard to get a gauge on sort of ideal trips with horses like him that do do it quite effortlessly? Well I think that you need the history to, to actually uh, tell you exactly what their, their optimum trip is and we can't get that with a young horse so um, you know he's, uh, his class is probably going to carry him through this campaign in, into um, the, the horses he's racing against at present and in the near future and then uh, after a period of time we'll, um, uh, you'll, you'll, he'll develop uh, um, some form whereby you'll be able to say exactly what his distance is but I think, you know, distant doubts are a bit tricky you know, if you um, um, you can't sort of um, pigeonhole them at a certain distance until they've failed it. Uh, John, we've seen this movie before, i.e. not taking a, a leg of the four-year-old series, Ping High Star and Luger, both didn't run in a, a leg of the series and win a derby for you. Uh, has this always been the plan with this horse, to, to miss the first two legs and then aim very much for the final one? No, it hasn't been. He, he's, uh, he's had some interruptions um, and he's had uh, been scratched a couple of times. So his you know, preparation hasn't been um, copybook uh, for any race. But um, as I've alluded to before, I mean, sometimes it works in your favour, sometimes it doesn't. So at the moment we're, we're still in play and, and the horse seems to be happy to, to go to the races and and he's willing to help us out, so we'll just keep asking him and see what happens. And we will indeed. He's in race number three tomorrow afternoon. Some of his rivals, Paul, 
playing for second. I'm imagining you'll be tipping him. Yeah, look, I, I, yeah, I think you're right. I mean, he, he's just going onwards and upwards, isn't he? And, you know, if they've got derby plans in mind for him, then he, he'd want to be winning this. All right, so some of those rivals. is a horse first up, Paul, that you've liked in the past, and he has been good to you. Mr Ascendancy does have to carry an extra £13 for the class drop, but this was a good field he beat. He did. He bit a really good field here. They bit the Golden Scenery, who we know is a good yardstick. Uh, a really good run from him, and I think he's a, a he's the Quinella horse for me. He's just going so well at the moment, this horse. And as you say, um, Beluga's come out and won since in this race as well. So it's a, it's a quite a good form race he's coming out of. Circuit Stella has also. That's yeah. him in the yellow colours there. So uh, Sylvester de Souza rides him for Ricky Yu. Next up, California 10 for a horse that we've never seen over 1,400 metres before. He didn't do a bad job last time. The extra furlong can only be a plus, can't it? Yeah, look, I think so. Look, the thing with this horse, he's by Rocco Gibraltar, so you'd think so as well, and the, the stats sort of point that way. He was an inconsistent horse, to be fair. Um, he's only a two-time winner from, his, uh, from all his starts here in Hong Kong, which is 26. But then the last two races, he's done pretty well. He's uh, he put a nice run behind Beauty Live and also this run behind Circuit Stella. So, look, he's... He's definitely capable, but he sometimes he just doesn't turn up on race day. He's pretty hard to catch, that is for sure, but uh, the winner hasn't been hard to catch. No, he hasn't. He's on top here for me, Beauty Eternal. Uh, look, I think he's just going to get the perfect run from the draw as well. Mr Ascendancy, hardest to beat. All for St Paul's, we know he likes to keep going when he gets to the front. And Spirit Express, now he did win uh, at uh, Happy Valley uh, over this uh, 1,800 metres before. He's back to 1,600 metres, but he, he does like the 1,600ers. So he's just in on a minor line, but 9357. And you won't want to miss Beauty Eternal. Two o'clock is post time for race number three when a potential superstar lines up for his next start at Sha Tin.